You know, Paul told Timothy, he said, harden yourself as a good soldier in Christ. And then again, you know, he talks about uh, a soldier, you know, not entangling himself in the affairs of this world. You know, we need to realize that we are, we are the soldiers of Jesus Christ, that, you know, the the spiritual warfare that we're in until after the tribulation when Jesus returns. You know, we have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We cannot do it in the natural. We must be born again of water and the Spirit. If we believe with our whole heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and we're willing, as he said in John 7, 17, he said, if any man be willing to do God's will, he will know concerning the doctrine, whether it comes from, originates from God, or Jesus said, whether I speak for myself, because the, the Pharisees in his day thought that he was casting out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebub. You know, so therefore he said that, you know, if you're willing to do God's will, you're going to know whether the doctrine originates from God or man. And, you know, man, we have to be born again of water and the Spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, you can't even see or perceive the kingdom of God unless we're born again. And then in verse 5, he says, Unless we're born again of water and the Spirit, we we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And Paul gives a revelation of that. You know, he says in Romans 8.10, If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. And there's only one way that we do that, and it's not just by believing, but it's by the faith of Christ in baptism. We believe God raised Jesus from the dead, and we confess Him Lord. You know, and that means that we're making him ruler over our life. You know, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. In Galatians 2.20 You know, we, we, we have to live by that faith. Even after we initiate that by putting our body to death in baptism, as he says in Romans 6.3, Know you not as many were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? And not only that, in the verses preceding that, he says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? Because he says in Romans 6, 7, just a few verses down, he says the one who is dead is freed or justified, made righteous from sin. In verse uh, 14 he says, Sin shall no longer have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under God's unmerited favor. And we see in 1 Corinthians 15, 56, it is the law that is sin's strength. That's why he says in Romans 7, 6, having died to what held us, that we should serve God in newness of the spirit, and not the oldness of the letter. You know, it is the law that held us prisoners to sin as he as he describes in Galatians chapter 3 you know and and uh, verse 22 he says for scripture has concluded and that means confined imprisoned everyone under sin that the promise may be given to those who believe and in another place he says that the promise may be sure to all the seed and we need we need to understand because we, we cannot do it in the natural and, and you know there's going to be a as he describes in Galatians 5 he said the spirit envies against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit so that you could not do the things that you would or you will you know so we had to put the put in the body to flesh as he says in 1 Corinthians 15 36 you fool what you sow is our body that we are sowing. What you sow is not given life unless it dies. And it is through the faith of Christ, starting in baptism into Jesus, 
not into a trinity because there's only one name given under heaven and knowing God is not a trinity Gen uh, Deuteronomy 6 4 Hear O Israel Adonai Jehovah is one Adonai the Lord your God is one Lord and we have to we have to see this you know it is through ignorance that we are alienated from the life of God as Paul reveals in Galatians or in Ephesians 4.18 he says talking about us and Gentiles he says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through ignorance because of the blindness of their heart you know so it is only it is only through believing with all of our heart as as Philip told the eunuch in Acts uh, chapter 8 when the after after baptizing those of Samaria and then John and Peter coming in behind them and laying hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit and they prophesied and spoke in tongues and the Holy Spirit told Philip he said go down the toward the road towards Gaza and as he went he came upon a, a eunuch with the Queen of Ethiopia's treasures she, he was responsible for all of her treasures and the Holy Spirit commanded him to go and join himself to his chariot and when he came up to him he was reading from the book of Isaiah and Philip asked him do you understand what you read and the humility that the the eunuch had he said how can I unless someone guide me I mean and we got to have that humility if we if we expect for Christ to dwell in us I mean we for one we we have to come to God with humility as he as he said in Romans chapter uh, 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifices this is after we have planted ourselves together in the likeness of his death and baptism this is a daily faith that we're our our spiritual worship to God on a daily basis is putting our flesh to death as he told the woman at the well you know the hour comes and now is that neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem shall he worship God for God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth you know that is what God desires that is that is why he planted man upon this earth in the beginning not in a spiritual form as Paul reveals in 1 Corinthians 15 the how be it that which was first which was natural and then that which was spiritual you know the first man was made a living soul this the last Adam Jesus was made a life-giving spirit when he ascended to the right hand of God on high he was made a life-giving spirit and that was what he was telling his disciples it's that's recorded for us in the Gospel of John you know if, you know it is expedient for you that I go that I go away if I don't go away the comforter will not come you know we, we I need to understand it as the law of life that is in the Spirit of Christ that makes us free from that law of sin and death you know and we we have to stand strong in that faith you know nothing wavering you know first corinthians ten thirteen. no temptation is overtaking you but such as is common to man and god is who is faithful will not allow you to be tempted but what you're able you know but people want to ignore that and they want to cling to this false thing that people have come up with off of John 1 8 because it says if we say we have no sin you know that doesn't have anything to do with being perfect it has to that he's talking about the law of sin that's in our flesh that Paul was talking about in Romans 7 23 I see another law in my flesh in my members waging war against the law of my mind bringing it into captivity to the law of sin that is in my flesh that's why he says just a few verses later because we've got to understand Greek the Greek letters were not written with punctuation chapter nothing that was added later somewhere in the 15th century you know when they translated it into English for study purposes 
And so we, we got to understand a few, a few verses later after saying that, he says that the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus made me free from that law of sin and death. You know, and we, we have to see that being freed from the law by the body of Christ that he describes in Romans 7, 4, consider yourselves also dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another, even to him who has risen from the dead. You know, that is, that is the liberty that we walk in. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. I mean, we need to get a hold of this because, you know, Satan, Satan can keep us alienated from the life of God through ignorance. It's only through faith that we obtain the promises. And, you know, if we, if we see that it's unattainable, well, no one's perfect. That is the same attitude that the children of Israel had when they came out of the wilderness and they sent out 12 spies. 10 came back with an evil report. We're not able. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. And no doubt in their eyes were grasshoppers to them. You know, they let what they saw with their physical senses annul the promise of God. And it's the same today. Oh, no one's perfect. You know, Paul never referred to one believer as a sinner. He believed he referred to them as holy and sanctified. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, when he's talking to the assembly at Corinth about marry, one a believer married to an unbeliever, he says that the unbeliever is sanctified by the believer. He says, elsewhere your children unholy. You know, so, I mean, we need to understand what he done because without faith, without faith in what he done for us, it has no power in our life. We, I mean, we need to understand that. We enter to, into the promises through the faith, through the faith of what Christ actually done for us. I mean, we really need to see this. It, and I'm going to end it there, and, and uh, may God bless these, these videos and me preaching this word and teaching this word that he has given me to give to the nations. And may he draw those to hear his word, because we got to know that we... we we, all the persuasion that we can do cannot draw anyone. Jesus said, if any, no one can come unto me unless the Father draws them. You know, when Peter, when Jesus asked Peter, who, who do you say I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, blessed are you, son, uh, 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 Simon Barjonas. He said, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father. You know, and he said, and I say unto you, I give you the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. He said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall already be bound in heaven. And so I'm, we need to, we need to understand. As, as Paul said, he said, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, I was determined before not to know anything but Christ and him crucified among you he said I was among you in fear and trembling and terror of God you know so that your salvation your deliverance and healing from sin because that's exactly what the Greek word means healing and deliverance as Peter said in first uh, or second Peter 224 he says by whose stripes you were healed you know, so we got to realize and take in context what John said in verse 1 8. You know, in 1 John 1 8, if anyone says they have no sin, they deceive themselves. But they don't go on to read the next verse. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I've made this argument with ministers before. I said, at what point do. Uh, 
is is he cleansed us from all unrighteousness and we don't have sin you know we put off the old man the body of sin through the faith of Christ in baptism and then we live by that faith daily that's what he's describing in Galatians 2.20 I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but it's Christ who lives in me and the life I now live I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me that is the faith that is the faith that overcomes the world that is the faith that we stand in wherein we resist all the fiery darts of the evil one. You know, we don't stand on our own. We do not stand on our own. Christ lives in us, and we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us. He came and took away our sin. The writer of Hebrews describes it. The apostle John describes it. Jesus came to take away our sin. He came to put away sin, as it's also described in another place in Hebrews. You know, we need to see the work that he done. Because without faith in what he done, it has no power in our life. Amen. Amen.